Thank you very much, um, Les. Um, having been asked to come and, and introduce um, Philip, I, I feel that some of that has already been done. In fact, I think most of that has already been done. But uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome uh, uh, also to the Inn of Court. In June of last year, I had the privilege of introducing the, the inaugural Northern Ireland Human Rights Lecture. And at the time, I said that I hoped it would be the first of many such occasions. And I'm delighted, therefore, that the Commission has asked me to introduce this very distinguished guest. Philippe is a Professor of Laws and Director of the Centre in International Courts and Tribunals at University College London, and he's a founder member of Matrix Chambers and has served as a Commissioner on the UK Government Commission on a Bill of Human Rights. And I asked him how that work was ongoing and he suggested to me that something had happened in the interim which may have had an effect uh, on the way in which it was likely to develop. He's also, of course, an acclaimed author and a regular contributor in both the print and broadcast media, and his books have provided the inspiration for a number of dramatic and documentary productions, and he's very uh, active in the world of art and literature. As Les has told us, he's written about some of the most complex and controversial legal issues of our time, and has shone a light on a wide range of topics from the legality of armed conflicts to the principles of environmental law. He provides in his book a compelling account of matters of huge public interest which involve complicated legal issues and he does this by bringing together his extensive experience as a practicing barrister, academic and broadcaster. If I can change the tack slightly, in my introduction to last year's lecture I spoke about the relationship between the courts, the executive arm of government and the legislature and I noted the role of the court in determining the appropriate balance between these institutions in a changing world and how the court has increasingly been engaged in matters of social policy. And I was therefore interested in Philip's uh, recent suggestion that a ruling by an international judicial body could help resolve the scientific dispute on climate change. It's a view he offered in September as part of a lecture at the UK Supreme Court on the subject of climate change and the rule of law, adjudicating the future in international law. It is an interesting thought, but it raises some fundamental questions about the role of the court in the resolution of contentious disputes. Within this jurisdiction, Lord Justice Gillen has been leading a major review of civil and family justice, and the review group's preliminary reports have been published for public comment. I'd like to thank Les for his contribution to the review, which as anyone who knows him uh, would expect has been assiduous, thorough and constructive, mainly. <laughs> um, the bits where Lord Justice Gillen didn't agree with Les weren't quite as good <laughs> in, the, in the latter aspect. Um, one of the core themes that emerged from the review is that of alternative dispute resolution. The review and reference groups have considered in some detail whether the high stakes approach of going to court is necessarily a proportionate and cost effective means of settling disputes in all cases. By way of example, the preliminary civil justice report identified a clinical negligence case in England where there had been a settlement of £450,000 and a claim for costs in excess of £1 million. This is an important consideration for non-governmental organisations when deciding how best to challenge or defend matters they regard as being in the public interest, given that the costs involved, uh, the costs that can be involved in court proceedings. And the issue of costs is particularly acute when parties seek to exhaust all routes of appeal that may be open to them, as often happens in these circumstances. I would hope that in the future, if the review recommendations are accepted and implemented, there may be scope to resolve such matters through a range of alternative approaches, although the public interest dictates that the court must always continue to be one of the options available. The subject of tonight's lecture underscores the fundamental importance of the role of the court in protecting the human rights and civil liberties of both the individual citizen and of wider society. I'm very much looking forward to hearing Philippe's reflections on his most recent work. This deeply significant book has won the 2016 Bailey Gifford Prize for Nonfiction and is to be translated into a wide range of languages. 
As Les has told us, it is the story of the emergence of world-changing concepts in the field of humanitarian law as a result of the atrocities committed by the Third Reich. What is quite remarkable is that these concepts were developed in parallel by two Polish prosecutors who were from similar backgrounds and had both studied at the same university under the same professor, but who had worked independently of each other. Through their dedication, they succeeded in establishing genocide and crimes against humanity as central legal concepts in the prosecution of Nazi war criminals at Nuremberg. The book also looks at the role of Hitler's personal lawyer, Hans Frank, who was instrumental in the construction of concentration camps and in ordering the transfer of many thousands of men, women and children to their death. East West Street is an absolutely extraordinary book which takes the author on a journey which reveals to him in an intensely personal and poignant way the devastating effects of the events that led these two police prosecutors to become the fathers of the modern day human rights movement. It has been described by John le Carre as a monumental achievement, a profoundly personal account of the origins of crimes against humanity and genocide told with love, anger and precision. So we are honoured to have with us the author of such an important and critically acclaimed work, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Philippe Sands. Thank you very much.